Welcome, my friends, to another video. My name is Bijan, for those of you that are new here. And if you are new here, well then, hey, you're new here. Welcome, and that's pretty much that. All right, let's jump into it here. We have... Today, we have another trade recap for you guys. Well, what else would we have? It's not We're not going to have a cooking episode here on this channel for you guys. Um, anyway, so we have a $3,000 profit here on NVIDIA. We did this in about 20 minutes. I'm going to do a quick trade recap on it, see how fast we can make this video. Uh, let me jump in over here for, you know what? Let me go over here. We're going to, I'm already bouncing around. All right. So this is what happened, guys. I got in right here. I added in right here. I took my profits here. I took my profits here. I know that was just the basic example, basic explanation of it. Now let me give you the detailed explanation. We were trading puts, guys. Puts means you make money when the stock goes down. Yes, you can in fact make money when the stock goes down. I'm only saying that for the people that are new here because I'm pretty sure that with all the ruckus going on in the world, some people are going to get their act together and decide, oh my God, I got to start being smart with myself and start to make some money and have multiple sources of income. So there might be some new people watching this video. So we were basically making money on the stock going down. Uh, we're trading options. Options is like a different way to trade stocks. Uh, we had put options. The puts means you make money as the value of the stock decreases. So by the time I was done with the trade, it was a $3,000 profit. Let me break down the orders for you guys here, and then we'll go back to the chart, and we'll try to wrap it up real quickly. So I was trading a current week expiration uh, in my last few videos. I've been doing a lot of next week expiration just to stay safe and just in case I needed to hold things a little bit longer. But I came in today. I knew I was just going to be in and out real quick morning momentum. Uh, and that's pretty much that. So I knew I'd be safe to go with the current week expiration. That was that. I had, again, the puts. Total, I had 12 contracts, but I started in with 10. Now, the calculation for the cost of the trade is going to be fairly simple because the numbers are very round. I had 10 contracts at 634. Then I added in another two contracts, like two minutes later, at 636. And then I closed out seven of the 12 that I had. So I closed out seven of them, literally 10 minutes later, at 646. And then the last five, I closed out like three minutes after that, at basically 650, 649. Um, what is that, 15 minutes? Yeah, 15 minutes. We made $3,000. I, I think that was, that was probably one of the quicker trades so far this year. Um, quicker trades with the bigger profits is what I'm trying to say. I'm sure I probably had some trade where it was even quicker than that, but it wasn't a $3,000 profit. Anyway, so when I got into it, I had 10 at 540 each. Now, for anyone that's new here, the 540, it shows like 5.40, but it's actually the way options works is one is equivalent to 100, so... One is 540. Very simple math here. 10 contracts times 540. That's 5,400. Very simple. Then I added in two more contracts for five even. 500 even. So 500 times two, that's 1,000. So basically add these two together and that'll give you the total cost of the trade, which is going to be 6,400. So this trade... It cost less than $6,500. I always like to give a used car example that says, hey, you know, you're not losing the entire investment. That's not what we're risking here. If you buy a used car for $5,000 thinking you can sell it for $7,000 and then you find out something's wrong with the car or you find out that, you know what, you bought the wrong model of the car, your analysis was wrong, whatever it is, you're not just throwing the car, in the car into the trash. You're not sending it to the junkyard. You know what I mean? You're, you can sell it for a loss. So that's the same idea here. The cost of the trade was 6400 but that does not mean that we were risking 6400 So that, that's pretty much that. And that was basically the entry. So that was right here. I'm going to zoom it in a little more for you guys here. Right here is the 634 that I first got in at because I could tell he was starting to lose some steam. My main idea was I wanted to get him as close to the – where are we at here? Let me zoom back. To the 250 level. I mean, it, it, it's a key level regardless, but that, that was it. 250 is what I wanted to get it closer to. I started into the trade because I could see that he's kind of starting to run out of some steam, starting to lose some steam. So I started in. And then obviously it, it had a little bit more room to go, which, hey, as I always say, when you get into a trade, you have to leave yourself room to work. You can't just expect the trade to instantly be profitable as soon as you get into it. It doesn't work like that. And if you think that that's how it's going to go, you're going to end up driving yourself crazy. So... I added in another two contracts right here, 
And that's where it put me at the full size position. And then as the value of the stock went down, the value of my puts increased. And I sold seven of them at 766, which is 766. So we're going to do seven times 766, which gives you 5,362. Then about three minutes later, I sold the rest of them, the last five that I had, for 815. So we do seven times 766. That gives you 5,362. Then we sold the last five for 815. So 815 times five, that gives you 4,075. Add them both together, and that gives you 9,437. That was the total amount that we sold it for. So if this was a used car, we bought the used car for 6400 and then we sold the used car like 20 minutes later for an average price of 9437 So how do you calculate your profit? Well, you just subtract what you paid for the car. In this scenario, you subtract what you paid for the trade, which was 6400 So you subtract 6400 from the 9437 and that's where you basically get the 3037 profit here. And this is basically where the trade, where we wrapped it up at. I got in here, added in a little here, and as we came down, this is where I closed out the majority of the trade. And I was holding a few more. I had... Uh, how do I put this? I was playing with like profit. Obviously, I was playing with profit. I've closed out the majority of the trade here, but I had two ideas. One, I was kind of hoping that, okay, I'll lock some in right here, and I was hoping that we'll continue down even to the 240, and that's where I would have locked in the rest of it. But obviously, that didn't happen. It decided to kind of start reversing. It chopped around a little bit, and I told myself, all right, at this point, if it goes above the 245, I'll cut it all. It still would be a profit. Uh, it didn't do that. However, it dropped again, and I could tell that it really was kind of fighting that area, and it was kind of holding up a little bit. So I said, all right, you know what? Let him go. Just get rid of it. And that was pretty much that, guys. Uh, we don't worry about what happens next or whatnot. It could have gone lower. It could have gone higher. It did go higher, actually, if you want to look at it. This was the actual end of the day. And this is exactly why you take your profits. In some of my previous videos, oh my god, this video is already almost eight minutes. What have I been saying? I've just been doing the number breakdown. My goodness. All right. Well, I don't have much time to ramble anymore, but I was going to say, I'll put this last idea out there. In a lot of my other videos, you'd see me get into a trade here and I'll get out here and it would keep going down more. And a $3,000 profit would have been like an $8,000 profit. And I keep saying, don't worry about that. Stick to your plan. Consistency is key. There's a reason that you have the plan that you made. Obviously, if you actually know what you're doing when you're trading. If you're just coming out, throwing darts in the dark, making random trades, trading random names and all that, you're not, it, it doesn't really matter because you don't have a plan anyways and there's no reason for what you're getting into the trade. But if you know what you're doing, there's a reason that you made the plan that you did. So get out at that plan. Like I was saying, the other trades, sometimes they'll keep going and it'll be more of a profit. I say, don't worry about that because there's going to come a time that you're going to say to yourself, oh man, Remember the last trade I got out of it for a $3,000 profit, but it would have been $8,000? The one time that you decide to break your rules is the time that it's going to come back and bite you. So if I got greedy and I said, oh my God, it could have been a five or an eight or an 80 or whatever thousand dollar profit, it would have got, came back to bite me. It would have been a loss. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. I know I said I wasn't going to do too much rambling. I try to keep that to a minimum. I just try to keep these to kind of like trade recaps, just kind of showing you guys what's possible here and what we're doing and explaining some of the basics to people here. Um, but that's pretty much that, guys. If you had, you know, 6400 less than $6,500, basically. If you had 6500 just for the sake of simplicity and numbers, if you knew what you were doing, you could have made a $3,000 profit in like 15 minutes as well. Um, and that's pretty much that. Now, I'm not trying to make this seem like it's all butterflies and rainbows. I don't know what it is. Obviously, there are times that it's not this great there are times that you're going to take losses and that's why i say to always keep a plan but i mean as long as you stick to your plan yes you're going to take losses as long as you have a proper strategy you're going to win more often than you lose and when you win you're going to make more money when you win than the amount of money that you lose when you lose 
So you're winning more often and you're making more money and you're losing less often and you're losing less money. So in the long run, you're smooth sailing as long as you know what you're doing and you stick to your plan and all of that. But anyways, guys, that's it. I'm rambling. This is where I need to stop it and cut it. I'm going to put some links in the description in case you're new here. Please follow me on social media because that's usually where I do all my other kind of stuff. I'm rarely on YouTube. I just kind of pop in here to kind of say, hey, how you doing? And give you guys a little content here and there, some trade recaps and all of that. Uh, but yeah, guys, who's Bijan T? That's my Twitter. That's my Instagram. Uh, you guys can always email me if you need anything. I'll put the link to our website below in case you guys want to join us in any of our activities and all that. But yeah, guys, I'll wrap it up here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you guys soon. And I hope you guys have a great night or a great day or a great life, wherever it is, however it is. I will talk to you guys soon.